Hi everyone, welcome to another devotional. Happy Friday, I hope you have had a wonderful week. Uh, guys, I'm getting real close to the end of Genesis. I am finishing up the story of Joseph and the end of the story of Joseph is just fantastic. Um, so I wanted to talk to you guys today about chapter 45. So I'm gonna read the first eight verses, okay? So just for some context, this is after um, Joseph's brothers have come to him but they don't know that it's him uh, and he's kind of done a couple of tests to see where they're at, see what kind of people they are after all of these years. And so this is after um, the brothers have come back and Joseph saying like, oh, Benjamin has to stay here because he had the cup in his bag and everything. And it just gets to the point where he like, he can't handle the secrecy anymore. So uh, chapter 45. Then Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood by him. He cried, make everyone go out from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers and he wept aloud so that the Egyptians heard it and the household of Pharaoh heard it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph, is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, come near to me, please. And they came near and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made a father to Pharaoh, made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Okay, again, read this story a million times. Like we all know it. But when I read this this week, I was just like, Oh my goodness, like, okay, so this guy, Joseph, his brothers, first throw him in a pit. That's the worst thing ever. Then they were like, well, we want to kill him. But then one of them was like, mm, let's, let's not kill him. Judah was like, let's not kill him. Let's sell him so that we can make a profit off of this. Because what's killing him going to do? So they sell him to the Ishmaelites. And then he goes through a series of terrible events um, and then gets into this high position but is now in a position of power over his brothers and his brothers come to him and they're like he's in the perfect position they don't know who he is he's literally in charge of all of Egypt and they come to him requesting food like this is the ultimate sibling power move like for those of you who had siblings like this would just be like my revenge can now take place like he could have tortured them like he could have made them gone through hoops like he a little bit did to test them to see where they were at but then when he realizes that like Judah is saying that he will sacrifice himself and like take Benjamin's place and Judah was the one who wanted to sell him into slavery like he realizes that they've had a change of heart but still I don't know about you guys if you've ever been in a position where someone has wronged you but then they like they do ask for forgiveness or they have changed it's still not easy. It's still super hard to just let go completely of the past and forgive them for everything that they've done. And so he says here, like, don't be angry with yourselves. He's literally forgiving them and giving them permission to not feel bad for what they have done. And then he says, like, it wasn't even you. Like, it wasn't you who brought me here. It was God. Like, what? Like, I'm speechless. Like, I can't believe after everything that he's been through, he has such a um, godly mindset. And that's what I wrote. I just wrote, wow, just wow. I cannot imagine telling someone who wronged me so deeply like Joseph's brothers did to not worry about it. Joseph had let it all go. He had forgiven them. Joseph had such a godly perspective on his situation. He didn't ask why. He wasn't bitter or angry. He saw the bigger picture of how God used it for good. Like he, he wasn't bitter or angry at all. He, and, and not only did he see the godly perspective of like he came to save so many people's lives, but he came to save their lives as well. And again, 
I would have been like, y'all are dead to me. Like, no, I'm not giving you food. You sold me into slavery. Like, what? And yet, and not only does he forgive them and, like, say the past is the past. It doesn't matter. It was God. He also, like, blesses them. He gives them food. And then the, the chapters go on to say, like, he brought his father back. He set them up with great land and let all their livestock live there. And they just lived amazing lives. He blessed them so much. He not only forgave them and had mercy on them, but he had grace. He gave them what they did not deserve. And he says that like he was a remnant. And that points us to Jesus and what Jesus did because Jesus came and he not only forgave us for our past and said, don't worry about it, but then he then blessed us and gave us eternal life. And we are undeserving of that. We are Joseph's brothers to Jesus. Like we sold him. We put him on the cross. All of our sins put him there. And yet he said, don't worry about it. Like, don't be angry at yourselves with what you did because this was all a part of God's plan. That's insane. Like, that's crazy to me. But then in putting this into action, it makes me think of situations in my life where someone has wronged me. Someone has done something that I don't necessarily deserve. What is my reaction going to be? Am I going to be a Joseph to them? Am I going to forgive them for their past and to have a godly perspective and say, there is such a bigger picture. God uses everything. He uses what was meant for evil for good. And that is like the core of Joseph's story. So again, read this a million times, but it just hit me even harder that Joseph was so forgiving of them and he blessed them and he said, don't worry about it. Like, don't be angry at yourselves. Like, I've forgiven you. This was all a part of God's plan. And he actually used me being sold into slavery to like full circle, come back around and save your lives. Insane, guys. Like, the Bible's crazy. It's so cool, the stories in it. And yet, you know, we shouldn't in this story want to be more like Joseph. This story again, points us to Jesus and we want to be more like Jesus because Joseph wasn't perfect. As my dad always says that there's no, nobody is perfect except Jesus, but the closest one was definitely Joseph. Joseph is his favorite character in the Bible. And uh, yeah, he does seem pretty amazing, but he was still sinful. He was flawed. And, and yet Jesus came and fulfilled that remnant. He was the one who fully saved us from our sin and forgave us from our past because he was perfect and he was able to do that. So that is my Bible lesson for today. Bible lesson devotional. <laughs> so used to the rock that I said Bible lesson. So I hope that you guys um, were encouraged and challenged by that and whatever is going on in your life. We have all had someone who has wronged us. Um, pray that God would give you the forgiveness that Joseph had, but also the forgiveness that God had because um, Ephesians 4.32, if I'm getting this right, says be kind and compassionate, forgiving each other just as Christ forgave you. We are to forgive others just as Christ forgave us. And how did he forgive us? Freely and without hesitation. So... That is a challenge to us today. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend and we will see you guys soon. Bye.